Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for being here tonight. I'm going to uh, tell you tonight what I believe is the thing that you must do if you are going to take back this country. So before I start, um, how many in here already are precinct committee members? Raise your hands. Okay, precinct committee men, raise your hands. Keep them up. Okay, those who don't have your hands up, those are the people you need to talk to, okay? These are the people who are going to change the country back to, to what it once was if you become a precinct committee member. Okay, uh, first I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then uh, I'll just jump right in it. Uh, I used to be in the Army. Uh, when we gave presentations in the Army, this is the way it was done. Uh, if you're in the Army, you probably remember this. You tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. And I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm just going to race through this, okay? Um, now, secondly, uh, a, a little bit about myself. I'm not here on behalf of the Republican Party. I have this badge on because I am a precinct committeeman and I'm a member at large. But I'm not here to speak on behalf of the Republican Party. I'm speaking on behalf of myself only, okay? Um, so, a little bit about myself. I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin. I... Uh, my parents were not wealthy. Uh, it was a great place to grow up, a little village of a thousand people. My dad was a precinct committeeman. He was on the county board. He was on the city council. An uncle of mine was a mayor of a small town. Another uncle was a town clerk. Uh, they, uh, he was, my dad was the youngest of eight brothers. These guys were you know, from the greatest generation. Um, just They grew up on a dairy farm. And as a civics experiment, and you're going to hear me talk about civics tonight, as a civics experiment in high school, I was getting ready to go off to the University of Wisconsin. I was going to room with my best friend from high school. We were going to be in a dorm, one floor guys, one floor girls, one floor guys, one floor girls. I mean, who would, wouldn't want to do that, right? <laughs> and then I got the letter back from West Point saying that I got, well, I got a phone call from my congressman saying, you got accepted to West Point. So I said to myself, oh, shit, uh, now what am I going to do? And I decided I couldn't turn it down, so I went to West Point. Graduated from West Point, I went into the military intelligence branch. I was a counterintelligence officer and a human intelligence officer. And um, one of the reasons I'm telling you about this is because th I learned in the Army some things uh, that causes me to approach things in a certain way. One of the things that I did when I was in the Army is I worked on um, really sensitive uh, uh, intelligence collection operations. I, I figured out what we had to go get, and we figured out how to go get it, and we had to train people and recruit them, and, and if, if they screwed up, they were going to die, basically. So we figure out what the mission is, and what the goal is, and we work backwards from that. And anything extraneous, that wasn't, wasn't going to help our mission, we ignored. So we set priorities. We have to set priorities now, ladies and gentlemen. We, we don't have a lot of time. We're going to lose this country in this next election cycle if we don't change things. So I'm going to show you tonight how, you, how we can change it. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to ask ourselves, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? What's our goal? And then how are we going to get to that goal? So. Think silently to yourselves. Think about it. What's our goal? Okay? I'm going to hope this thing's going to work. It's Windows. Um, our goal is to take back our government, isn't it? Our yes. government. Yes. Our government. Okay? So, working backwards from that. How do we take back our government? We, we figure out how to take back our government by working backwards from that goal. We, we take back our government by electing constitutional conservatives. Not any old Republican, not any old Democrat, not any old person. It's gotta be somebody who will believe in the, who believes in the Constitution, wants to see it enforced and followed, not somebody else. Yes. So to elect these constitutional conservatives, first they gotta get on the general election ballot. To get on the general election ballot, again, working backwards, they, they've gotta win the primary. To win the primary, you got to get the most votes in the primary election. To get the most votes in the primary election, you got to get the best. You got to have to have the best get out the vote effort, okay? Of all the Republicans, the candidate who has the best get out the vote effort in the primary election is going to win the primary. The best way to have the best get out the vote effort 
is to have the greatest number of precinct committeemen. Precinct committeemen are the best tool for getting out votes. Okay? If we constitutional conservatives and the Tea Parties and the 912 groups and the We Surround Them groups and the Right to Life groups and the motorcycle groups against immigration, illegal immigration, all the various groups here in Maricopa County and, and in Arizona and in every other state in the Union, if we all unite somewhere to focus on winning elections, we have a hope, okay? If we band together inside the Republican Party as precinct committeemen, we can guarantee that the constitutional conservatives will win these all-important, traditionally very low turnout primary elections. The primary is the most important election. Typically, in Arizona, fewer than 20% of registered Republicans vote in the primary election. That's, that's pathetic, it's disgusting, but it's a huge opportunity for us, okay? The other thing that precinct committeemen can do is they can vote to endorse conservative candidates in the primary election, okay? Only precinct committeemen can do that. So, and only precinct committeemen can vote for the leadership of the party. Only precinct committeemen get to vote for the leadership of the party. If you're a registered Republican, you didn't have any say in who just got elected RNC chairman. But if you're a precinct committeeman, you voted for the state delegates, who then voted for the RNC delegates from Arizona, who went there and voted for that RNC chairman. But if you're a mere registered Republican, as far as the party concern is concerned, you're a nobody. And if you're a registered independent, you really are a nobody. You're a, in terms of party politics. You're out in left field. You're not even on the ball in the ball game at all. You're not even in the stadium. Okay, I call this the neighborhood precinct committeeman strategy for lack of a better term. It's basic American civics. I learned this in seventh grade in my hometown in, in the public school system. They don't teach it anymore. I went to Badger Boys State. They taught it there. We, we pretended that we were precinct committeemen and that we had two mythical parties and we did all this stuff. But they don't teach it anymore. So what's a precinct? A precinct's the smallest subdivision, political subdivision in the state. All of you live in a precinct. But I'll bet most of the people in here don't even know the name of their precinct. They don't know its physical boundaries, its, its geographical boundaries. And I'll bet you, you don't even know one Republican who lives in your precinct. Think about that. In Arizona, there's one precinct committee for every 125 Republican voters in a precinct. In my precinct, I'm in Tempe 59. We have eight precinct committee slots. I filled up all the slots, the open ones. And so now we have eight precinct committeemen. So we've got, uh, each of us have responsibility to get about 125 Republicans to the polls. That, that ain't hard to do. This has been called the most po powerful political office in the world. If you do a, a, a internet search, most powerful political office in the world, it'll take you to Phyllis Schlafly's website, and uh, there's a little pamphlet there you can download, and it'll tell you more about this. Generically. This is the most powerful strategy, this neighborhood precinct committeeman strategy to take back control of our government. And it's easy. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to pay any dues to be a precinct committeeman. And it's got a proven track record. Forty years ago, everybody knew how to do this stuff. When I was growing up, I'm 55. When I was growing up, everybody in my hometown knew who the precinct committeemen were. Every, and this was all across the country. You knew who your precinct committeemen were. But not anymore. And the reason we got away from it is because of television and radio. The parties moved away from this. And the progressives got on the school boards and made sure that the textbooks didn't teach this stuff. So it's been used successfully for decades. It, it was used by Obama to beat the Clinton machine. And yes, we can use it too to defeat the rhinos and the Democrats. Okay, so if you're not willing to go to a Republican Party monthly meeting, if you're not willing to spend two hours a month, then just you might as well leave right now. Just you know, eat your dinner and don't listen to me. Uh, it's not for you if you won't walk, walk and get some signatures uh, for nominating papers and maybe help get out the vote uh, in your precinct. 